Hi guys and welcome to another video on Amazonia YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about DSP, specifically how to create an order start to finish and what are some of the details that you need to pay attention to like bidding, optimization strategies and such. So stay with me. So after naming your campaign, that is the order, how they call it in DSP, then you have the optional settings of selecting which media type you're going to use i find this not that relevant because it's only used as you can see over here it's only used um this will be used for automated line item recommendations but since we are creating a fully manual campaign in dsp i will skip this option there are always you will see throughout the process there are many options that DSP is helping you to create and optimize your entire campaign and, and, and entire strategy, which is okay to some extent, but it has its downsides. Next up is most important setting is selecting is it going to be awareness campaign, consideration campaign, and conversion or conversion campaign. Now, each of these settings will affect how different things are then enabled throughout the order creation and, and uh, further on in, at the line item level. I will be covering this breakdown in a separate video, what makes uh, the awareness stage, consideration and conversion stage. But it's the out of scope for this video. Unfortunately, this video would be then, I don't know, an hour long. Anyway, for this type of campaign, I'm creating the campaign, which is going to be, I'm going to retarget the users who saw products of our competitors, but haven't bought it like in the last seven days, 30 days or more. So my main goal for this one is going to be conversions. Now, as soon as I clicked conversion, additional field has opened. So you, I'm now able to, to select a different KPI, that is key performance uh, indicator, depending on our goal. As I said, the main goal for this campaign is going to be uh, purchase. So I'm going to go ahead and select return on ad spend. Difference between return on ad spend and total return on ad spend is that um, in DSP, when you enable total and look at the total metrics, that's like, um, that's a brand halo sales if you don't know what brand halo sales are i'm linking the relevant video in the description but in short brand halo brand halo sales are for example if if you're advertising two of your products but after your campaign is launched some other products from your portfolio are being sold then those are the brand halo sales because advertised products were not sold but some of the others from your catalog but for this one i'm going to select return on ad spend now you have an option to select kpi target based on this so is it cost per acquisition cost per sign up or any other you have an option to select a kpi target um, here if if you select a certain kpi target then uh, and further on uh, optimization strategy where you um let amazon dictate your bidding and budgeting then you kind of recently we saw that also in campaign manager where you can select like target cpa or target cpc for sponsor display campaigns um, here i will skip setting a kpi target because as, as i said i'm focusing now on a strictly manual campaign so i want it to be as manual as it's possible and i want to control everything in this occasion so i'm going to select don't set a kpi target now the optimization optimization strategy part part is most important one as in every video i recommend that you hover over any information tooltip and see what does it say for example this is where it can get tricky for a recommended option and selected by default is called prioritize spending full budget while maximizing performance as I recommended. And then you have a second one, prioritize KPI target. Um, 
Oh, it says enter KPI target to choose this bidding bidding priority. Okay, we're gonna I'm gonna cover that in a second. Um, so you have those two options. Then you have an option to, to choose your budget management strategy. Are you going to let that to Amazon, depending on your selected KPI, or you want to manage budget manually? So I'm going to select manage budget manually, and I'm going to do that at the order level and at the line item level. Now, um, if I remember correctly, in the past, you could select, uh, this was called uh, maximize performance um, strategy now. This is not available. They call it prioritize KPI target. So let's go ahead and set a KPI target. I don't know. Let's set it at three. Who cares? Uh, and then I want to select prioritize KPI target as an option. As you see, this, optimi uh, this optimizes bidding to achieve KPI target over budget delivery. If you select this, monitor the campaign regularly to ensure sufficient budget delivery. While the first one, it's worth mentioning that prioritize spending full budget while maximizing performance. Um, this is like a tricky one because if you select this one by default, what's going to happen is that this one is perfect if you're um, a company that has a set budget, set monthly budget that you need to spend and you want to spend it because that's the investment that management decided to use in order to hit some KPI targets. And if you don't use it, then you can get in trouble because you're not utilizing budget appropriately and that can raise some, some of the questions. Whoever worked, ever, uh, whoever worked in a um, corporation know what I'm talking about. Um, but what the, the, this recommended uh, bidding strategy does is that if you set a target budget of $1,000, Amazon DSP is going to make sure that you spend every cent of it, even if it's not going to give you any results. <laughs> Funny as it, as it sounds, but it is like that. So, um, for example, you're spending $500 out of those $1,000 throughout the month, and you're, the pace is getting slower and slower. So you may end up spending like 600 or 700 by the end of the month. What Amazon will do, they will increase your bidding and bid higher in order to hit that goal of spending, regardless of if that spend, higher spend, is going to give you any results or not. So, yeah, uh, it can be useful for those use cases that I mentioned, but for this one, we're not going to do it. So hit done once you're... Uh, Happy with that? I thought I put three over here. Okay, three. Okay. Then budget and flights. I covered already this um, at my previous DSP step-by-step -step tutorial linked here, but for this occasion, I'm not gonna skip it. I'm just gonna, let's give it like, I don't know, 500. For this flight, let it run until end of March. Flights are like, um, I would best describe them as like sections of the budget, if you will. So you had a certain budget and a period of time where you want the budget to end. And if you don't add any additional flights, the campaign is going to end at March 31st. So just to be sure, I'm going to add additional one April 1st until the end of April. I like to have it month over month, uh, month just for the sake of simplicity. Next up, you have an option to do not change flight budgets or roll prior flight unused budget. So, for example, if now, now it's February 25th, uh, it can be that uh until the march 31st we spent on see we spend only 400 euros or dollars and then those 100 euros we're gonna transition to april budget and because we just wanna spend it i did that's why typically i choose so roll prior flight unused budget there are options to set budget cap and agency fees that's the the next section so those two options are set. You can set the budget cap, for example, on a daily level. So this is monthly, or in this case, it's monthly, but um, 
budget is defined by the start and end date of the flights. And you can also limit that per day. For example, if that's something that works for you per day or per month, like I get it, I, I will give it 500 and then I will gonna limit that 500. I don't want it to spend any, any more, but that's just uh, like a security um, setting that you can set on, for various use cases. We're gonna skip that. We're gonna skip the agency fees. Agency fees, are, that's basically where you wanna, if you're an agency for the sake of ease, um, easiest invoicing towards your um, end client, then you wanna set your agency fees inside as a percentage or as a fixed. Next up is to add a product. Now, this is very important. Um, when adding product, you have an option to set the, the featured products, which will be advertised in the ads. You will see later on. And then you want to also want to add the other products related to this one. And there will be an options. I will not going to show that because for the sake of privacy of this account, but you will have an option similar as in campaign manager to add your list of ASINs and then add, add them all and then just check a few of them that are featured so those are the ones that will be measured and shown in the creatives when you when we get to that part um but the other ones are important to be added because you want to track them as those brand halo sales and um, just to be able to see like total uh, sales, total return on ad spend and those other um, options. I'm gonna pause now and just continue when I add those products. Okay, I've added those. As you can see, I have six products tracked and two of those are featured. So it, it's like very, it, it's, it's simple basically. So only two will be used in this campaign and only two of those, it's basically the same product just with a different, um, functionalities um, only those two are going to be shown in the ads and the other six are going to be tracked for brand halo sales now um, what's left is optionally if this would if this was the a off amazon campaign then we would add additional tracking options here like a like a pixel or tag that we want to uh, use the track of off Amazon metrics. Next up is a frequency settings, which is very useful. Frequency capping is useful because using Amazon Marketing Cloud, you want to see with a with report. There's a report on how, on average, how many times and a user sees your ad, and you don't want to oversaturate potential buyers with your ads and plus if you select um cost per mile setting as um as a metric of what you pay to amazon then you're going to pay for every impression and then if you saw if one single user saw your ad 100 times that's 100 impressions per one user and 10 years users that's already a thousand and you need to pay like i don't know five euros 13 euros depending on your setting but in general you should use amazon marketing cloud to pull that report and see what's the average impression uh frequency um <laughs> yeah what's the average frequency of uh for your users and then decide is it like five five a max after they decide to buy your product or which one. But on average, because this is on on a campaign level and there are gonna be multiple line items for each uh, device and maybe for each audience, then you wanna have here a number that's higher than what's gonna be combined for all line items. So you can set up a 10 times per day here and you'll be good. Uh, Frequency groups are something that I rarely use, but you can actually create a predefined frequency group and then just add your order to this one. So um, this will be a first part of this video because I don't want to make it too long. It's already 15 minutes, but next up, it's going to be line item creation. And then after line item creation, there's going to be creative 
selection and more coming up. Let me know if this was clear and see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.